What's up you guys, this is the Dark and Rose, and here we are with yet another fanfiction narration. This time around, it's a multi-chapter one. Not a long one, but it's multi-chaptered. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're going to be reading a fanfic by an author known as Tear of Lights. Don't know if you guys heard of them. I hope you did, because I hope you have, because they are one of my favorite authors uh, in the for, for Ruby fanfics. Pretty much one of my all-time favorite authors. And it's kind of like an honor to be able to read this fanfic because it was actually one of the first few fanfics I ever read on fanfiction.net that was multi-chaptered. So, yeah, I have a lot of history with this one, though I haven't read this one in a long time like Stockholm Syndrome. P pretty much, yeah, like it's, it's a serious honor to be able to read this fanfic. I mean, like I said... Um, it's been a very long time since I read this fanfic, just like Stockholm Syndrome. So I kind of don't know what I'm getting myself into again. So yeah, I know this is a um, I know this is a White Rose story, if I'm correct. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I think this was before anyone decided to do anything about pairings, or like Mark pairings. So, yeah. Um. Pretty much. So let's get this started. This story is known as Tell Me Something. And by the way, I just want to say, make sure you go check out Tear of Light stuff. Um, link to her profile will be in the description below. And um, if you want me to give you a recommendation for one of the many fanfics that she has um, to read first, I highly recommend this story that we're going to read or, or, or you're going to hear or um, another one known as The Princess's Rogue. I love that one to hell, and I'm definitely going to be sure, well, I'm definitely, well, not, I'm definitely sure that I'm going to be reading that soon. So, here we go. Thank you once again, Tear of Light. This really means a lot. Chapter 1. Oh, fuck. Chapter 1. Heartless. Sorry, I had a bit of a moment where After Effects suddenly came up again. I'm actually pre-rendering a After Effects composition while I'm recording this. So, it's gonna be, I'm pretty much stressing my computer out right now by recording and doing that. So, here we are. <coughs> Do this again. <coughs> Chapter 1. Heartless. Weishni was, uh, was a lot of things. A skilled dust and sword wielder, an heiress, a nice princess. But contrary to popular belief, she was not heartless. Well, many of her fellow baking classmates dubbed her as such. That was simply their own misinterpretation of what was otherwise her annoyance of them. Yes, Weiss had a bit of an ego, but Heartless? That was something she was not. A whimper. Ice blue eyes fixed on the source, Weiss frowning. And because of the fact that she indeed had a heart, she was currently left in this uncomfortable situation. An hour ago... Why Schnee sighed heavily, the white-haired heiress of the Schnee legacy rubbing the back of her neck in exhaustion. Today had been a long day full of rowdy classmates, absurdly boring assignments, and don't even get her started about the ridiculous rumors spreading around Beacon Academy right now. While rumors were nothing out of the ordinary, especially for a school this size, the content of such rumors was what left Weiss reeling in barely res restrained anger. One particular rumor stated that she and a certain red cloak wearing girl, who shall not be named because just thinking about her name tended to leave Weiss overly stressed, were secret lovers. Apparently this love affair had all started on the first day of school. Oh well, jeez. That sounds like a problem. Mm. Weiss didn't know who started it, but when she found out... But when she finds out, there will be hell to pay. Oh, yes. Because really, who in their right mind would have ever thought of such stupidity? Really? Her and... And... Ugh! The sound of paper tearing immediately snapped Weiss out of her rage-filled thoughts. In her hands now lay the half-torn remnants of the newspaper she had picked up to read later this evening in her dorm. Sighing again, Weiss held the poor newspaper to eye level. In her moment of anger, the latest issue of Veiled Times bore the brunt of her temper. Oh, well. Not that there was anything really anything in interesting in the newspaper, anyways. 
Weiss could always pick up another copy on the way back to her dorm if she really wanted to. Taking a deep breath, Weiss vowed not to have another meltdown. At least not until she she got back to her dorm room where she could melt it down in peace if she so decided. Instead, she chose to focus on everything and anything that was not red. While she walked back to her dorm. Like the chirping birds or the blooming flowers. The gardeners did a really did a wonderful job maintaining the campus, Weiss had to note. Ruby Rose, sitting in a stone bench nearby, staring off into space quietly, the laughing idiots that were her classmates, the... Wait. What? Weiss backtracked a few steps. Hair turned in the direction of the nearest stone bench to her left. She blinked. Well, her eyes weren't fooling her. She had seen correctly. There was no mistaking that red cloak. On the bench just 15 feet away from her overlooking the Emerald Forest was the object of Weiss's utter loathing and, and misery since coming to Beacon Academy. Unlike usual, her cloak-wearing teammate, being a rather bubbly girl, was sitting quiet and alone. Something just seemed so wrong about that image. Weiss looked away for a moment. Come to think of it, Ruby Rose didn't seem quite herself today, in any of the classes she had to unfortunately share with the girl. Many a time, Weiss had caught the dark-haired girl staring out of the window dazedly as if she wasn't really there to begin with. Weiss frowned, quickly catching on to what she was thinking. It was not that Weiss cared about Ruby or anything. <laughs> nope, she didn't care one bit. Even after they were assigned to a team together, along with the annoying brat's overbearing sister and the boring bookworm. Sorry, let me read this mic. <laughs> okay, cool. Whew. The fact that Weiss could even tolerate the younger girl's presence since their explosive meeting, literally, was a miracle in and itself. Then again, to think Weiss can handle anything life threw at her would have been blasphemy. As annoyed as she may be, Weiss was nothing less than professional, as she was raised to be. And it was such professionalism which told Weiss to simply walk away and continue on her merry way without a single look back. Ruby's back was facing her after all, and the girl probably hadn't even heard her anyways. With that settled, Weiss faced forward again, her dorm building visible not too far in the distance. Taking one step forward, Weiss silently berated herself when her body refused to take another step. Ah, <sighs> damn it. Something had to be terribly wrong with her today. She couldn't. She couldn't do it. She couldn't leave Ruby alone right now. Not until she found out why things just felt weird. Weiss face palmed. Oh, God. <laughs> hey. Came a voice behind Ruby. Hey. Man. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, to explain why I'm laughing about that. Um, back in June, when the E3 press conferences came up, the first one was EA's conference. And when they were showing off Need for Speed, they had a, a YouTuber that like owned a prank channel on the, cha on the site. Um, p was picked to like, you know, announce it and you know, talk about the game and stuff. Before, like, the actual person, like, the developer or, like, some person in the development team came in. He got so nervous that, like, they had to bring in that guy that I mentioned. And the interaction was so hilarious because it was just like, hey, man. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. But it was more, like, nonchalant. It was more like, hey, man. <laughs> oh, man. It, it, was, it was pretty bad. It was hilarious. That's why, hey... Uh, me me being the same thing because I don't know how to fucking talk right or do dialogue right. Oh god. Let me let me start let me do that again. Sorry. Hey, came a voice behind Ruby. Nothing. No flinch, no cringe, no movement aside from the slight breeze which blew by, ruffling Ruby's cloak. The younger girl had her hood on for some reason, though Weiss couldn't fathom as to why. It wasn't cold out right now. In fact it was quite warm. The heiress and the Schnee, the, 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 the Schnee legacy had half a mind to dress down into a tank top and shorts when she got back to her dorm because it was so warm out. Ruby should have been sweltering under her layers. Hey, Weiss said again, this time a bit louder. She was just under three feet behind the raven-haired girl at this point. Weiss crossed, oh, Weiss crossed her arms over her chest with a frown. 
There was still no reaction from the scythe wielder. A finely manicured eyebrow twitched. I love that detail. Was Ruby ignoring her? No, no, it wasn't that. Ruby wasn't the shallow type who resorted to such things. After spending an exuberant amount of time and energy just trying to befriend her in the first place, that would have been the last reaction Weiss expected. Ruby probably had her headphones on and was blasting some garbage for music, making her deaf to Weiss's voice. Hey, that's not garbage. I, I imagine Ruby listening to Knuckle Puck, or something like Dance Gavin Dance, or Bring Me the Horizon. I am self-inserting myself into this so hard. Stop that. <laughs> Just say, yeah, I am a fan of those bands that I mentioned. Especially Knuckle Puck's new stuff. They're so good. I said, hey! What a wonderful time of day! <laughs> God damn it. Weiss now standing off to Ruby's left, grabbed the younger girl's shoulder and yanked her around to face her. While she was almost certain that Ruby wasn't intentionally ignoring her, unintentional or not, Weiss knew was not one to ignore Self-entitled. <laughs> Weiss. It came up with a pathetically weak voice. Hey. Weiss felt like someone had punched her in the gut. She was frozen in her spot, gawking. Was this your spot? Ruby asked, either not noticing the other girl's shock or not caring about it. Silver eyes looked devoid of anything but of everything but agony and pain. Ruby was pale. A cold sweat covering her face. A fist clenched tightly to the black material of Ruby's shirt above her stomach. Normally lithe and smooth movements were just were jerky and stuttering as Ruby rose to her feet, shakily and unbalanced. Weiss couldn't help but stare. This was Ruby? This was the annoying brat who was too hyper for her own good most times of the day? This was the Ruby Rose who frustrated her to no end with her naivete? This was the girl who aggravated Weiss just Thinking but was just by thinking about of her? Fuck. Sorry, I'll move. Again that pathetic voice. This was not her Ruby Rose. There you go. Ruby said with a forced smile. She now stood off to the side, allowing Weiss free reign on the stone bench. It's a nice spot. Ruby looked back to the Emerald Forest. I didn't mean to be in the way. Then she was falling forward, limp. Ruby! <laughs> it was purely out of instinct that Weiss lunged forward and caught the collapsing girl before she could crack her head open on the concrete below their feet. Weiss initially stumbled a few steps to accommodate the sudden extra weight, but soon adjusted. Is there a mosquito bite on my hand? Hey, Ruby! Harsh breaths were Weiss's only answer. The younger girl in her arms shivering every so often. Weiss bit her lip. Scanning the area, the Shani successor quickly noted that there were the only ones in this particular area of the Beacon Academy campus. While this particular corner was not the most traveled of areas, surely she'd soon see another person to deal with this mess. She was Wai Shani, the heiress of the Shani legacy, master of Merton Aster, wielder of dust. Wai Shani was not a damn babysitter. And so she waited. And waited. And waited. But when five minutes passed and no one else wandered by, Weiss cur silently cursed whatever gods existed in this world in six different languages. The white-haired girl looked down at the shivering mess in her arms. Ruby better appreciate what she was going to do. I like just the opening of this. It's so hilarious. Because it seems like Weiss is like a serious person, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, well, now she's babysitting a red cloaked girl. Anyways, now we're back into the present. It would take all of five minutes for Weiss to figure out how she was going to carry the unconscious Ruby Rose's safety. Carrying her bridal style was out of the question. Weiss was an heiress, not a damn bodybuilder. So she resorted to draping Ruby across her back. <clears throat> oh, fuck. Ruby's head resting against the back of her right shoulder. It would take another half hour to make it back to her dorm room. <laughs> I was about to, I was about to burp. That's why my voice went weird. Why is that times hugging the walls of buildings? The wall of buildings. Oh, the walls of. Oh my God. Ah. Uh, 
Why is it times hugging the walls of buildings? The walls of buildings. Stalking the shadows of the inner hallways in order to remain out of sight. While she was not heartless, there was there was still a thing called pride. And she absolutely refused to be caught with a self-proclaimed hazard to her health on her back. Once she finally made it back to her room, her room was closer than the nurse's office, Ruby was gently deposited on her bed, having been stripped of her weapon and shoes just minutes prior. Ruby's boots and scythe remained near the door to Weiss's door. Out of the way. When attempting to remove the girl's cloak, Ruby showed a surprising amount of aggression and stubbornness even in her unconscious state. Weiss just giving up in the end and leaving her with it. Another whimper and an undecipherable murmur. And now Ruby was here. And Weiss didn't know what to do. This is ridiculous, Weiss muttered, turning her back on the younger girl in search of her cell phone. Or, as we will note later on, scrolls. God damn it, that looked really weird on camera. Ew. How's the After Effects composition looking? Oh, two hours left. Fuck. <laughs> the logical thing to do would be to call the school nurse and let the nurse take Ruby away, leaving Weiss in peace. The only flaw in that logic was that the moment Weiss took one step away from her bed in search of her cell phone, Ruby made that awful whimpering sound akin to a kicked puppy. Weiss froze. Damn it. Weiss liked puppies. Damn it all. And also the funny thing is that this is 2013, so we didn't even know that Weiss was a, an avid lover of dogs. So, nice, um, <laughs> awesome to be accurate right there, too, Blight. With all thoughts of finding her cell phone forgotten, Weiss turned back to her bed, moving to sit on the edge of it. Ruby, hey, she said softly, unsure if Ruby could hear her or even sense her as she tossed and turned re restlessly. I'm here. Shh. That did nothing to ease the young girl. Another meal leaving Ruby's lips, making the schneers cringe. Making a fist, Weiss clenched her jaw in indecision. Blue eyes looked away momentarily before falling on the red-cloaked girl again. Oh. Sorry. Against her better judgment, Weiss knee crawled onto the bed and snuggled up next to Ruby, taking the girl's head in her arms, holding her close. Now. Oh my god. Now, this would be the part where I would either say or sing out the lyrics, but to be honest, I cannot really do that stuff right now. Well, well, not well, not the same part. More like the singing part is what I can't really do. Because um, right now I'm on my um, I'm on a quote unquote voice probation because. Um, Warped Tour, which was Sunday on July 30th, which was like only a few days ago, um, kind of fucked up my voice, and it's been recovering. It's almost out of re it's almost out of that like state, but um, I'm trying to make sure that I, I just let the recovery go on. So I'm not gonna try singing it, and to be honest, I think saying it would just kind of ruin the song in of itself. So yeah. I know this song. I definitely will say the final phrase of the uh, song, though, because it's a uh, it's one hell of a song. When Weiss was younger and her mother was still alive, whenever she had a bad dream, her mother would always do this: crawl into Weiss's bed and wrap her arms around her daughter warmly, gently stroke her hair, fingers running through white locks soothingly. And Weiss's mother would sing in the most angelic voice Weiss had ever heard. That would be one of the few memories Weiss had left of, Weiss had left of her uh, had left of her mother before the older Schnee's life was suddenly and viciously cut short by a car accident, of which Weiss was the only survivor. From her mother's death, Weiss's father never recovered. He became distant and disconnected from his daughter. The only thing which garnered any sort of reaction from the older man being Weiss's ever-increasing skill in swordplay. Soon that became Weiss's focus, her mother, her mother, her mission, her goal in life, to make her father proud of her, to make up for the fact that she lived, 
and her mother died. But that choice was not without its sacrifices. Ruby settled in Weiss's arms, the younger girl's once ragged and harsh breathing evening out, her tossing and turning stopping. It amazed Weiss how effective this was, but then again, it worked for her. So why not for other people? Weiss continued her soft melody well after Ruby fell into a peaceful slumber an hour later. The Schnee, oh my god, the heiress of the Schnee falling asleep herself. Just as her eyelids drooped shut and the darkness wrapped her up in its warm embraces, in, in its warm embrace, Weiss vaguely remembered thinking about how she hadn't felt this content since her mother died. I'm the loneliest of all. <laughs> oh man, I remember reading. I mean, like, I don't remember the contents of reading the story um, since it's been a long time, but I remember what I felt after reading that section or that part of the chapter. And this is just the first chapter, but I have to say that it was it's one of the most amazing and heartfelt moments that I've ever read in a Ruby fanfic. And that says a lot. I mean, like, because so many other fanfics that were, like, awesome came out, like, you know, as the years went on. But this one, my feeling of this, of that part, just stuck to me so much. It really did. <sighs> it just feels strange for me to read it again. Yeah, I, I guess so. All right. Here's another chapter. Oh, man. Yeah, here's another chapter, guys. And by the way, in case you're wondering, what, um, in case you're wondering, because in the AN of that chapter, um, Weiss's, uh, well, in that, in that, you know, in the universe that's here, like, wrote for this story, um, Weiss's mother died in a car crash. We 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 know that, and um, <coughs> and Ruby's parents died in a Beowulf attack, leaving her the only survivor. This story also takes place some time after initiation, and pretty much the moments where Weiss was a stuck a bitch to Ruby <laughs> for being the leader, until Professor Port was like, "Oh, you can't be a leader." <laughs> so here's chapter two. I'm, I'm guessing I'm kind of sick. I did almost, I did almost, um, passed out in a warp tour. I really did. Got lucky because of the hydration station. Here, so here's chapter two. Scars. Beep, 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 beep. All right. It would be an annoying buzz which roused Weiss from her, from her slumber. At first, she didn't know where it was coming from. The schneer is blinking groggily as the beginning rays of dawn came through her open window, still half asleep and wanting nothing more than for the annoyance to stop. Weiss's left hand felt around her bed in search of her alarm clock to shut it off. What Weiss ended up finding was something else entirely. A soft moan. Weiss blinked. Since when did my alarm clock mo- Blue eyes opened wide in an instant. R R R Ruby! <laughs> Why is there Anna away from Ruby's chest in doing so? Falling off her bed in her haste to get as far away as possible from the other girl. <laughs> what? This had to be a dream. Or rather, a horrible, horrible nightmare. Weiss's face was scarlet. Her mind scar scarcely processing the fact that she had woken face to face with a slumbering Ruby. Furthermore, Ruby was in her bed and in her sleepy haze to turn off her alarm clock. Weiss had inadvertently groped in the scythe wielder's chest instead. Why do these things keep happening to her? The buzzing stopped. Getting her wits about her, Weiss rose to her feet and made her way over to her bed. Ruby remained sound asleep in spite of her prior outburst and the sunlight peering through her open curtains. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Blue eye locked through Ruby's belt pouch, the leather visually vibrating in sync with the buzzing. Excuse me. I said quietly, undoing the hook on the on the pouch, reaching inside. Her fingers quickly found the desired object and pulled it out for inspection. Just as she brought the buzzing scroll up to her face, the buzzing stopped. 
28 missing calls. <laughs> Holy fuck. I would be like fucking ashamed if I had that many missed calls. Vice looked at Ruby's sleeping face. <laughs> Vice jumped, almost dropping Ruby's phone. When she calmed her rapidly beating heart, she accepted the call, the, the crawl, the call, and brought the phone up to her ear without further thought. Damn it, Ruby! And gave a familiar voice over the line. Do you know how long I've been trying to get a hold of you? Do you know how worried I've been? Vice blinked, looking back at Ruby again. So that did really happen. Oh, man. All the memories from yesterday evening flooded back to Weiss's mind. Ruby so out of place, quiet and solemn. Ruby's haunted eyes, Ruby collapsing, taking Ruby back to her room. Where have you been all this gang, was it? <laughs> Ruby looked to be in much better shape than she was just hours ago, Weiss noted. There are, no longer did she look to be in pain or pale for that matter. Now she just looked adorable. But you would never hear that comment verbally from Weiss. Who is this? Weiss raised an eyebrow. The change in Yang's voice was instantaneous. In spite of the tones of worry and anxiety mixed in, her normally bubbly, uh, her normally bubbly, overbearing and downright annoying voice had suddenly turned cold, dark, and just plain venomous. What, what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't even do that intentionally. That just happened. <laughs> I better stay away from all those you those British documentaries. <laughs> Why Shani? Why said calmly. You think by now you recognize your own teammate's voice. Why do you have Ruby's phone? It's simple, really, the light haired girl said. Why tossed some stray hairs from her ponytail back over her shoulder. That's because she's with me right now. What have you done to her? <laughs> that one came out as a growl. If I found out you've. Blue eyes narrowed. Is it really so hard to believe that I might actually be spending some quality time with my teammate? Yes! Yang snapped. What? Weiss rolled her eyes, putting a hand on her hip. She collapsed yesterday, the Shani's successor said before, White, before Yang could ignor ignorantly accuse her of some other fallacy. Uh, fallacy or fallacy. Silence. I was nearby when it happened, Weiss continued, hearing no objection from the blonde. That in itself was strange, but Weiss merely made a mental note about it for later. And Ruby has been in my care ever since. Weiss's gaze flicked back to the younger girl, the sword wielder smiling a little when she noticed Ruby hugging her pillow. Where's your room? South wing, Weiss answered dutifully. Fifth floor, room 502. The light went dead. You're welcome, the white-haired white -haired girl grumbled, staring at Ruby's phone. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Hold on. Oh, fuck. Just my nose. It's like... Right now. So. Oh, my God. Weiss well, rubbed her face inside. It'd be mere minutes, if that much, before Yang came banging on her door, demanding her sister back. That being said, Weiss returned Ruby's phone to the younger girl's pouch before looking at the slumbering girl again. Do you know how much trouble you are? She said softly. Ruby merely slept on, nuzzling Weiss's pillow. Honestly, Weiss said, shaking her head in exasperation. The things I do for my teammates. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Turning back towards her adjoining washroom, Blue Eyes caught sight of pale flesh causing Weiss to pause. <laughs> Sometimes during the night, part of Ruby's shirt had rode up, uh, rode up her body, exposing part of her stomach. When Weiss realized she was staring, she immediately turned her back on her on <laughs> her sleeping girl. Her cheeks are rosy red color once again. What am I? What the? Oh my god! Hold up a moment. Oh fuck! <laughs> Weiss was at Ruby's bedside in an instant. Pulling up Ruby's shirt with gentle hands, her breath caught in her throat. Caught, her, caught in her throat. The moment three wicked-looking scars crossed her vision. The jagged marks looked so out of place there on Ruby's skin. Weiss tracing one of them before she thought about what she was doing. Ruby shivered slightly at her touch, whimpering, causing Weiss to immediately pull back her hand. A concerned look on her face. Before she could do anything further, a loud banging reached her ears. 
Why? <laughs> it was, oh man, I wish I did that better. <laughs> it was Yang. Help it up now! Ugh, <laughs> oh, if it wasn't one thing, it was another. <laughs> Rising to her feet again, Y strode over to the door to her third door. All of all, smoothing out her ruffled dress from the day before. Don't know, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Why, I swear to the gods, if you don't open this door right now, I'll out the door to room 502, song open wide, revealing a less than pleased wife's knee. You what? Vice crossed her arms over her chest. Break down my door like the barbarian you are. Yang's lips pulled back into a snarl. Weiss held her ground, narrowing her eyes. If Blondie was going to start a fight here, Weiss was more than willing to indulge her. Where is she? Yang demanded through pressed teeth, the blonde pushing past Weiss and walking straight to her humble abode. Oh, damn it, Kai started streaming. Normally, if someone invaded her privacy like that, teammate or not, they would have been set flying into the opposite wall in the hallway thanks to Murn Naster, as it was right now. Weiss was much too tired right now to deal with such things, wanting nothing more than for this whole situation to be resolved as soon as possible. And that involved Yang, having Yang take Ruby home, or at least back to her dorm room. Thankfully, Yang's shoes were clean somewhat, and she wasn't dragging in mud prints or anything, or something hideous like that. Not that Weiss would be the one cleaning up that mess. That's what maids were for, after all. Sis! Yang exclaimed upon sight of her younger sister. It truly fascinated Weiss how quickly Yang's expression went from menacing to gentle. Yang, she leaned against the doorway to her bedroom as the blonde gently fussed over her younger sibling, examining her this way and that for her injury. Yang would find none, of course. One, but Yang would find Yang would find none, of course. Weiss was a perfect hostess. Surprisingly, though, in spite of the spot examination, Ruby would not awake. The younger girl slumbering away as if dead to the world. Fuck. Watching Yang ever so gently scoop Ruby up into her arms caused a knot to form in Weiss's stomach. Something she later realized to be jealousy. <laughs> Knowing her face was betraying the normal, cool, and calm expression that she always did her best to maintain, Weiss immediately made her way back to the main entrance to her dorm, schooling her expression as she waited for the pair. Yang emerged from her bed in her bedroom not even a moment later. <laughs> a minute later, Ruby called up against her. Satisfied? Weiss said bitterly. The tone, one which even surprised Weiss herself, made Yang pause. Blue eyes met violet ones. Weiss clenching her hands into a fist. After a few seconds, Yang nodded, seemingly having found something in Weiss's cold gaze. Thank you, Weiss, Yang said, passing through the threshold of the entrance, with Ruby and her, and, and her little sister's things in hand. She turned back to face the Shinieris. Thank you for taking care of my baby sister. A small smile. Weiss didn't return Yang's smile, and Susan, instead choosing to roll her eyes and huff. She's my teammate, Dalt, Moy said, crossing her arms over her chest. The white-haired girl refused to acknowledge Ruby as her leader, even after the events during initiation. But that was a different issue for another time. As are you, Weiss continued. It's a given we take care of each other. <laughs> Yang smiled widen. Even so, thank you. Yeah, yeah. An unexplain unexplainable sensation blossomed in Weiss's chest. It was warm. Now go away, Weiss said, dismissing King with a wave of her hand. I have things I need to take care of. As you say, Princess, Yang grinned. Weiss shot her teammate an icy glare. Yang left not too long afterwards with Ruby. Weiss immediately closing the door once they were out of sight. Turning back to her door finally without any more interruptions or annoyances, Weiss decided a shower was in order. Classes would be starting soon, and there was no way she was going to any of them in this state. As she slowly made her way to the washroom, Weiss couldn't help but remember the horrific-looking scar in, in Ruby's stomach, thinking of her own scar. Weiss brought up a hand to her left eye and traced the marred flesh with her finger. Ugh, <laughs> oh, fuck, my nose! I might as well just say I'm sick. All right, damn. We're actually making good progress on this story. 
Most likely, this is going to be a two-parter, you guys. Just saying. Chapter 3. Not that she cares. <laughs> Ruby didn't show up for any of her classes. Holy fuck. That was already... That, that kind of hit me hard already. Well, that in itself shouldn't have effective wise, uh, effective, affected Weiss. Whether or not her teammates attended her classes is really none of her business. Unfortunately, that was all the Schneeyars could think about as the day dragged on. <laughs> Fuck. No, given that this was Ruby, the girl whose energy rivaled that of a hamster on coffee, it shouldn't have been surprising for this. It shouldn't have been surprising for the girl to skip Grin Studies 100 class. Listening to Professor Port drone on and on it was just as exciting as watching paint dry. Or in other words, it was a royal waste of time. Oh my god, my fucking nerves are so nice! Ugh. However, Weiss being Weiss, she attended anyways. No need to ruin her perfect attendance record without reason. But when Metallurgy 101, Weapons Mastery 100, and Weapon Dynamics 105 passed by without so much of a hint of the red cloaked girl, Mice started to worry. Those were some of Ruby's favorite classes, and the scythe wielder wouldn't be caught dead in missing them. A stack of books thumped down on the corner of the table. Amored colored, eye uh, colored eyes raised to look at the source of the disturbance. That was a bit excessive, Voice said, making Weiss nearly jump out of her skin. <laughs> but like, <you> know, <laughs> I can't really, I can't really do that with my voice. For the longest time, Weiss had been the sole occupant of this part of the Beacon Academy library. The moment classes ended, the first place she sought out was here. As expected of a school this size, the Beacon Academy library took up an entire wing. Books of all sorts filling the row of rows upon rows of shelves, from floor to ceiling. Much to the surprise of Yang, the blonde, annoyingly enough, also sharing many classes with her Ruby. Weiss had voluntarily grabbed an extra copy of the assignment notes handed out during class for Ruby in her absence. But rather than leave it at that, Weiss took things a step further and decided to borrow the necessary books from the library to help with those same assignments on Ruby's behalf. Which is why she was still here, getting the living daylight scared out of her. Why Weiss, why, 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 bleh, Weiss went to such lengths for the younger girl, even though, even she didn't know. Ruby Rose was the bane of her existence, a hazard to her health. The misery that was, well, miserable. By all logic, why shouldn't even be here right now, amongst dusty tomes, putting together a collection of readings to help the youngest team member of Team Ruby. Yet somehow, Weiss felt that she had to. The gods only knew how terrible Ruby was at finding this stuff. It was like the cloak-wearing girl was allergic to books or something. Perhaps it was just that no one had ever shown her how easy it was. Ugh. Wow. Many a time growing up, Weiss longed for such assistance, just another person. A helping hand to make her feel not so alone. Perhaps that was why she was doing this. Because she knew what it was like. Or perhaps she had just finally snapped. Had that quarter life crisis moment and had gone crazy instead. One thing was certain though. This by no means was why sucking up to their leader. Why she did not grovel. To anyone. Blake raised an eyebrow to Weiss. Setting her book down on the table in front of her. She gave the heiress a questioning look. Weiss quickly recomposed herself. When did you get here? She questioned, a tinge of annoyance in her voice. Calm down, Weiss. It's only Blake. No one came back here, or rather, very rarely did anyone come back here. Weiss had been here countless times before now for various studies, and never has she seen a single soul linger here for any of those times. She should have known Blake of all people would have been the first. Just now, actually, Blake said, not the least bit perturbed by the white-haired girl's tone. Amber colored eyes looked at the stack of books on the table again. Books with spies as wide as Blake's hand sat on the corner of the table. Ten of them in total. Catching up on some reading? Blake gave Weiss another look. It's not for me, Weiss answered, huffing in annoyance. No sooner had those words left her lips did Weiss realize her mistake. Oh. That question was accompanied with another raised eyebrow. Blast it! <laughs> if, it's one, if it's not one thing, it's another. Weiss's eyebrow twitched. Blade didn't have to say didn't have to say anymore for Weiss to know what she was asking. It's none of your concern, the Shinny successor said stiffly. She crossed her arms over her chest. God damn it. Hmm. 
Why people cared about what she did, to me or not, bothered by bothered wise to no end. What did it matter if she was getting books for someone else? She was not heartless after all. Did people have nothing better to do with their lives than to intrude on hers? What she did was her business. Everyone else could butt out. Weiss turned back towards the bookshelves in search of the last book on her list. Ruby hasn't been in class all day today, they commented. The white-haired girl froze, on the verge of ducking between two nearby bookshelves. Blue eyes wished whitened momentarily before they narrowed, Weiss clenching her jaw. She refused to look back at her library companion. Is that so? Weiss said, forcefully keeping her voice neutral. Her back still faced Blake. I hadn't realized. A chuckle. That got Weiss whipping around to look back at her teammate. The sound seeming so foreign coming from the normally silent girl. Your friend is lucky, Blake said, picking her book up again to read. She flipped a page. It's not every day why Shnee picks up books on your behalf. Gathering these books for Ruby doesn't make us friends, Weiss snapped. Her patience gone. All this tiptoeing around the issue was aggravating, not to mention irritating. Weiss was not one to do such things. No, Weiss didn't beat around the bush. She was blunt to the point, and if you couldn't handle that, tough. A smirk worked its way across Blake's lips, the black-haired girl peering over the top of her book at Weiss. I never said you were getting those for Ruby. Weiss opened her mouth to retort, only to close in a moment later. Blake was right. She hadn't said anything about the books and Ruby in the same sense. It was Weiss who put those two ideas together herself. The smirk on Blake's lips widened. Weiss gritted her teeth. She'd been played. <laughs> <laughs> Face it, genius, you've been played. Oh, really? <laughs> Sorry, I had to make an Uncharted 2 reference. Uh, that's one of my favorite quotes uh, out of anything. Like, if you say anything about someone getting played, you'll you'll hear me say, like, you just played yourself. Or that, that one thing I just reenacted. For someone who can't seem to get far enough away from Ruby, you, see, you certainly seem rather invested in her right now. A pale fist clenched, while silently berating herself at the slip-up. She hated the way Blake was currently looking at her. It was like she knew something Weiss did not, and it was driving Weiss crazy. I refuse to let my marks drop because of her, Weiss forced out between clenched teeth. That was all a lie, of course. Assignments done in class were individually marked. It was the only practical lessons. It was only the practical lessons. The ones usually held outside. More often, the Emerald Forest, which were marked according to the team's performance. How any of her teammates did inside of the class would bear no consequence on Weiss's marks. <laughs> oh, God. The loop Blake was giving her toward, told Weiss her teammate knew that all too well. Damn it. She was getting soft. All this team business. Gah! <laughs> this is why she was better off working alone. Stupid, stupid Ospin. Well then, Mishni, Blake said, returning her gaze to the books in her hand. She turned another page. Don't let me hold you back. I, wouldn't, I too wouldn't want my marks to suffer in the absence of a teammate. A te teammate. Teammate. <laughs> te te teammate. Mark. Ah! The fist at Weiss's side shook. The Schneer is fighting to push down her rage before she did something she regretted. It both am am amazed and angered the white hair girl just how fast Blake saw through her. Any other person would have been fooled with that certifuge. If that wasn't enough, her colder-than-ice attitude was usually enough to chase them off. Stupid Ospin, indeed. Grabbing the stack of books off the table with a grunt, Weiss just proceeded to stomp her way out of the library, before Blake could further drive her up the wall. Ruby didn't need that last book. Weiss had assembled more than enough reading material for Ruby to get her assignments done. The Shnee successor did have a tendency to go overboard with her own, uh, her own assignments, after all. Just as she was exiting the library, Weiss froze. Blue eyes widened when she realized one important fact, or lack, or rather, a lack thereof. Weiss had absolutely no idea what Ruby's dorm room number was. Beacon Academy's dorm consisted of two buildings standing re relatively near each other. One was for the girls and the other for the boys. Oh yeah, I forgot, in this, un in this um, universe for this story, it's separate dorms, not co-ed. Both buildings had 20 floors apiece, each floor having 100 individual dorm rooms for the students. That being said, there was no way Weiss was going to figure out which room belonged to Ruby without a number to go by, 
or a floor number. Not only would knocking on every single door until she found that found the one belonging to Ruby take hours, the white-haired girl absolutely refused to humili humiliate herself with such a thing. Weiss Schnee groaned, her forehead smacking the top book on the stack she carried. Would it kill the powers that, to, that be to let her have one normal and uneventful day for a change? Someone above certainly had a grudge against her. Not that Weiss believed in gods in the first place, but everyone needed a scapegoat, right? Looking back at the rows of bookshelves behind her, Weiss resigned herself to further embarrassment and went back to Blake, asking for Ruby's door and room number. As Yang's partner in initiation, the black-haired girl probably took the time, or rather was forced to, given Yang's personality, to get to know her partner, unlike Weiss herself. With Yang being Ruby's self-proclaimed big sister, there was no doubt in Weiss's mind that Yang knew Ruby's door and room number, and hence Blake. Weiss sighed. It was going to be a long day. Coming, coming! After a few seconds, shuffling sounds were heard through the door. Yang, I told you I'm... The door to Ruby Rose's room, dorm room swung wide open. Fine. Ruby blinked in complete surprise, obviously not expecting her guest to be the schneerist. Oh, hey, Ru Weiss, Ruby said, swallowing nervously. I thought you were someone else. Weiss remained quiet, giving the younger girl a quick once-over. Like on the first night before initiation, Ruby was dressed in her pajamas, a brown tank top with a cartoony Beowulf head, and white and red polka dot pants. Her hair was a bit disheveled. Ruby's slightly lethargic movements indicating she had just woken up from a nap, or was about to take one. All in all, Ruby looked much better, not as perky as she usually was, but much better. Weiss inwardly sighed in relief, seeing the younger girl up and about eased the worry that she had, that had been eating away the Shinee's successor since yesterday. It never occurred to her just how wound up she was about, in, about it until she saw Ruby. Um... Weiss? Ruby asked hesitantly. If Weiss could have heard her teammates' thoughts about now, she would have quickly realized just how out of character she was being. Normally their conversations, that being hers and Ruby's, were all about yelling. Weiss doing most of it, Ruby just taking all the yelling. But as it was, there was no yelling, and Ruby was doing most of the talking. The poor younger girl didn't know what to do. Is everything alright? Ruby stuttering snapped Weiss out of a reverie. The white-haired girl quickly blinking her way back to awareness. Realizing that she had been staring, a scowl quickly overtook her face. Weiss thrusting the heavy stack of books at the scythe with her without warning. Here! <laughs> I'm so kidding. Here, Weiss said, her eyes narrowing slightly as Ruby stumbled back two steps to adjust in a new way. I would have... I would have just been like... If I, were, if I were to do it the way that she did it, I would have been like just fucking... Flail the fucking stack of books at her. Like, fucking here! <laughs> and just, like, knock her ass down with it. I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. Not, not to Ruby. Mm -mm. <clears throat> not at all. Oh, fuck. That, that, that hurt my throat a bit. <sighs> You'll need those, Moist continued, for the assignments headed out in class today. On the top bug tucked inside the cover were all the assignment notes. Ruby blinked, the red-cloaked girl clearly not expecting this treatment from Weiss, no less. You got me a copy of today's assignments? Ruby looked dumbfounded. You weren't in class today, Weiss said with a huff. She crossed her arms over her chest. So someone had to. It was rather irritating how she had to explain the obvious. And these books? Weiss fought the urge to roll her eyes. What about them? What about him? I mean, come on. She goes out of the way to help a teammate. And what, what, what gratitude does she get? Nothing. This is the reason why Y stopped caring about everyone else around her long ago. Choosing instead to rely solely on herself. Ungrateful wretches. Did you not hear what I just said? No. Weiss glared. I mean, yes. Why is it? Ruby corrected herself quickly. Yes, I did hear you. It's just, it's just what? Lips pressed into a fine line, Weiss narrowing her eyes more. Ruby looked out at the books in her head for a moment before meeting her teammate's gaze again. Thank you, Weiss. Thank you, Weiss, Yang said, passing through the threshold of the entrance. <laughs> it's a little flashback thing. She, she turned back to face the Shinieras. Thank you for taking care of my baby sister. You didn't have to do this, but you did. Ruby gave Weiss a smile. Thank you. 
Why stick to the side, avoid, avoiding the younger girl's gaze? You're my teammate, Dolt, she said, but her voice held no malice. We're supposed to help each other out. A pause. I'm sure your sister would have done the same if I hadn't, the sneer I said, trying to play this off as nothing. Weiss was doing her damnness to fight back the creeping heat she felt in her cheeks. That inexplicable feeling she was back again. The sword wielder at doing all that she could to pretend it wasn't there. Actually, no, Ruby said in embarrassment. More on her sister's behalf. Not really, a soft laugh. She's not the type who normally remembers these things. Weiss looked back at the scythe wielder and nodded her head in agreement. Yang wasn't really the academic type. She was more the shoot first and ask questions later type. How unfortunate. For them all. If the fate of the world rested on Yang's shoulders and all she had to do was pick up paperwork, the world was doomed. Yeah, well, just don't make this a habit. No, I said, remembering where she was. She quickly worked to regain her cold mask of indifference. The last thing the la last the last thing she needed was for Ruby to get gush all over her, or for the young girl to go bragging to their teammates about about this. Why well, did have a reputation to maintain after all. Just gotta like dust off the shirt. Dust off that reputation, son. I won't, <laughs> Ruby said, shaking her head fast enough to leave Weiss dizzy. I promise. Good, Weiss said, giving her partner a cool look. Because this won't happen again. With that said, Weiss started down the hallway back to her room. Ruby's room was actually on the same floor as hers, just on the opposite side of the dorm. Yang was on the same floor as Blake, both of whom were just a floor below them. Weiss, the schnee heiress paused in her steps, glancing back over her shoulder. Thanks again. You know, not just for the books and assignment notes. For yesterday, too. Another smile. Weiss's cheeks threatened mutiny again. The white-haired girl facing forward, continuing on her way as if nothing happened. Idiot. The sword wielder muttered to herself. Weiss was warm. Well, mm-hmm. That was pretty good. All right. We're gonna get now for chapter four. This is gonna be the last one for this session, and then um, and then uh, part two, obviously. All right, here we go. Chapter four: that feeling of wrong. Oh fuck! Hold up. Sorry, I realized my voice during that entire thing was starting to go all weird. So let me grab some water. The perfect break time for everyone. Alright. And I'm back with some Gatorade. Not sponsored by Gatorade, sadly. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God, I'm so weak. Uh, I'm like... Okay, we're good. Uh, just gotta open this up. Oh. All these people streaming on Twitch right now. I should go back to streaming again on this. On, on this YouTube channel. Actually, that's a good time to actually ask for feedback. Um, let me know how I'm doing with this. Sorry if I'm causing a lot of interruption, but that usually happens whenever I'm narrating. And if you actually want me to, to um, do more live stream narrations again, let me know. I'll be more than happy to do so. I actually enjoy that a lot because it actually gives me an opportunity to interact with everyone. God, that actually makes my voice a lot feel a lot better. My my throat, I mean, not my, th my, not, my not my voice. Uh, that was so good, man, dude. Gatorade is so awesome. Chapter four, that feeling of wrong. Their transport was cold, dull, and noisy. Unlike the airships, which brought them in comfort to Beacon Academy on their first day. This flying monstrosity provided barely any consolation to its passengers aside from the small, fake leathered covered seats. The padding in them was awful. Weiss pulled restlessly at the scratchy seatbelt to hang her down. A, a week had passed since Ruby's unexplained collapse. Thankfully, since then, the red cloaked girl had returned to her regular, bubbly, and annoying self. As concerned as she was about the whole incident, Weiss couldn't bring herself to ask Ruby about it, nor Yang. 
It was really none of her business, or so she tried to convince herself. Yet, in spite of her attempts to forget her concerns, deep down, Weiss was worried. Something didn't feel right about this, and that feeling had been nagging at her constantly, like an unscratchable itch. Things were too convenient, too lucky to have happened right now. Some people would have called it a coincidence, but Weiss knew better. Nothing happened by chance. Everything happened for a reason, just like Weiss shook her head. Her gaze shifted to the tiny window to her right and the scenery beyond that. She had to focus. Everything else would be addressed at a later time. She couldn't afford to get distracted now, not when they were heading to their first mission of the year. Yet, no matter how many times she tried to push things away, that feeling of wrongness kept coming back. Perhaps it had something to do with their briefing earlier this morning. Ooh, ooh, so spooky. I love that. I I like that concept that everyone had before, well, before anything, to be honest. I don't think the first years had a mission for a while. The only thing that, um, the only thing that happened in volume one was that it was the whole initiation and that took episodes. But other than that, I don't think there was any, I don't think the first years did any missions. I think. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that. So I like that concept where like, you know, they're, they're on missions and stuff because we really didn't see we we didn't, we didn't really see much of them on mi- we didn't see them do any missions to be honest. It sucked. This sucked. Anyways, let's get down to it. Oh good. You're all here. <laughs> Headmaster Osmond casually lifted his mug to his lips and took a sip. His desk was made of mahogany. A massive piece of furniture which could have easily acted as a dining table for a family of four. Holy fuck. I wish I had a desk that huge. My desk right now is a piece of shit. (laughs) Bookshelves were made of the same wood, lining the walls between the windows. Some of them held actual books, while others held frames of various accolades uh, accolades and certificates, along with weapons and glass boxes. All of them stood side by side in front of the headmaster's desk, their their feet shoulder-width apart, their hands behind their backs. Ruby stood on the far left side of the line, while on her right being Yang. To Yang's right was Blake, with Weiss standing on the far right side of the line. Ruby's eyes sparkled at the sight of those prized weapons, Weiss fighting back the urge to roll her eyes. Blake's expression was blank, neither impressed nor bored with Vosman's showy office. Yang, on the other hand, was extremely bored. (laughs) The blonde stifling a yawn, all while trying not to look too conspicuous while they waited. (laughs) I <laughs> like it. I, I imagine that, right? Just like everyone's just like, it's they're, they're doing their usual shit, and then there's Yang just like, eh. <laughs> oh fuck. I do apologize for calling all of you ladies here on such short notice. I, d- I don't like that. I don't like that. That sounds. That's so weird. Headmaster Osman continued, setting his mug down on the desk. I've already spoken with your professor, so don't worry about being penalized for your absence. Thank the gods for those small mercies. Weiss was not so was so not looking forward to writing makeup assignments because she was here instead of in class. The reason I've called you here t- today is rather simple. The opening of the door drew Weiss's attention away from the headmaster for a moment, blue eyes locking on Glendo Goodwitch as the woman entered the room with four paper files in her hand. I have a mission for you. Weiss's gaze snapped back to the headmaster in an instant, her eyes widening slightly. Everyone's gazes were on Ospin now, even that of Ruby and Yank. Weiss could already feel the prickle of anticipation building, her breath quickening a bit as they waited for further instructions. Glinda set down the file folders on the headmaster's desk in front of him before moving off to the side. Thank you, Miss Goodwitch, Ospin said with a brief nod to the Huntress. The Huntress returned the nod. Turning his attention back to Team Ruby, Headmaster Osman rose from his chair before speaking. It's not very often we call upon our freshman students so early on, he said, circling around his desk to stand in front of it. But there have been times where it has been necessary. This is one of those times. Osman raged back and picked up a file folder from his desk. He flipped it open and examined the contents. 
Currently, Team Ruby is the highest ranking team amongst the first years. And given your track record so far, it is believed that you four will easily handle the trials ahead. At noon today, Gundogowicz began, you'll be transported to the town of Daggerhorn. Daggerhorn? Oh, god damn it! What's wrong with me? Sorry. I, 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 I don't like it whenever it gets super serious for a long time. Yang interrupted, her eyes wide. Weiss jumped at the outburst. The Schneer is scowling at her obnoxious teammate for the interruption. Any snappish remarks were quickly lost, however, the moment Weiss caught sight of the nervous look Yang sent in Ruby's direction. Glancing to the red-cloaked girl, Weiss immediately noticed how rigid and pale Ruby was. Ruby's uh, silver eyes wide with horror. Ooh. Miss, M yes, Miss Shaolong. I'm going to continue pursing her lips. It was very clear that the Huntress wasn't all that impressed with Yang's disruption. Your mission will be simple. Seek out and destroy the pack of Beowo set to occupy the area. All the information, oh, information, information you need are in these files. Any questions? Weiss's eyes didn't leave Ruby for a second. Even as Glinch, Gl Glinch, Glinda finished their briefing, it sounded like an easy enough mission. Though with Yang and Ruby currently acting like they were, Weiss knew this was going to be anything but easy. Something was going on here, and not a good something. Yeah, Yang said in response to Glinda's comment. I have a question. Violet colored eyes turned crimson as he glared at Headmaster Ospin. Yang's lips pulled back into a snarl. What the hell are you trying to pull? Yang took one step, one menacing step forward, and Bracelica quickly shifting into active mode on her wrist. Glinda Gooch's reaction is instantaneous. In a flash of movement, she shifted in front of the Headmaster and drew her baton. It was pointed at Yang, glowing with power. You dare, with all due respect, Headmaster Good Miss Goodwitch. Vice cut in, her own actions su surprising everyone in the room, including herself. Just like the veteran huntress in front of them, Weiss too had moved to stand directly in front of Yang. In fact, with arms stretched in front of the blonde protectively. She stared at Glinda Goodwitch dead in the eye. The older woman was visibly stunned by this move, Breton lowering just a bit. It doesn't take a genius to figure out there's more to this mission than just exterminating Beowulf as running a monk. Weiss continued, taking a brief glance back at Yang and then at Ruby. Yang stared at Weiss in confusion, while Ruby stood, still, frozen in silent horror. Something else is going on here, and as a part of Team Ruby, I think I, along with the rest of my teammates, deserve to know exactly what that is. Blue eyes shifted to Headmaster Ospin. The man still looking through the file folder in his hand. Brown eyes slowly raised to meet Weiss's gaze. The sword wielder's eyes narrowed. The silence was thick and heavy, making Weiss grit her teeth. It took everything the Schneer had to keep herself from fidgeting. The headmaster's gaze was cold and calculating. Prodding, too. Testing her resolve, Weiss held her ground. More stubborn sense of pride than actual confidence. It seemed to do the trick. Very well. Osman said, tossing the folder, file folder back onto his desk sloppily. But sir, Glinda protested, her baton dropping to her side as she turned to look at the headmaster. It's quite all right, Miss Goodwitch, the headmaster said. Mishni is correct. They should know fully what they were heading into if the, if the mission is to succeed. It was never my intention to hide anything from everyone, from anyone. You know that. Glinda Goodwitch sighed in defeat, returning her baton back to her boot. Yes, headmaster. Weiss breathed in relief soon after lowering her arm. She looked back at Yang, the blonde looking a bit more calm than moments ago. Her eyes back to its regular violet color. Hopefully, Yang wouldn't do anything crazy in the next few minutes, ruining all of her hard work. Ah, that was good. That's a good Gatorade. Headmaster, the headmaster Ospin rested back against his desk, half sitting, half leaning on the edge of it. Reaching back, he picked up his mug again and drank for a moment. Aside from your excellent grades and overall skills, oh, Ospin started. He set his mug down again. There was another reason why I chose your team over, say, Team Juniper. Yang's hands shook at her sides, Weiss looking back at the blonde in concern, not for Yang's well-being, of course. Oh no. It was more she was concerned Yang would blow up again, literally this time, taking with her the headmaster's office. And them. 
Thankfully, that didn't happen as Blake reached out to put a hand on Blake's, in, on Yang's shoulder. The black-haired girl shook her head when Yang looked back at her. They seemed to placate Ruby's older sister for the moment. The blonde stepping backwards in line, her arms crossed over her chest. The town of Daggerhorn has been abandoned for years, Ospin continued, not skipping a beat. Either he didn't notice the Luke's exchange between Yang and Blake, or he just didn't care. Rather than sending in a team blind with no familiarity with the area, I chose to send in you, as at least one of you knows the layout of the land. A sharp inhale to the left had Weiss turning in that direction again. Ruby was shaking now, a hand clutching tightly at the piece of black shirt over her stomach. Weiss's concern and worry suddenly skyrocketed. Was Ruby going to relapse into another episode? Blink went tense beside Weiss. Ruby Rose, Headmaster Osmond said. Those two words were the most foreboding thing Weiss had ever heard in her entire life. You were born in Daggerhorn, were you not? Enough! Yang exclaimed. She quickly wrapped her arms around her shaking sister and held her tight. We are not taking this mission! What? Glinda Kudowich almost squawked with shock. Shock was soon replaced with anger. However, the hunters glaring daggers at Yang Xiao Long. After all of that we've done for you, you dare come down, Miss Goodwitch, Osmond said as calmly as ever. This wasn't unexpected after all. But headmaster, please, Goodwitch, Miss Goodwitch. That plea was followed by a small smile on the headmaster's part. Glinda Goodwitch sighed again, bringing up a hand to her forehead. She massaged her temples with her fingers. After a few seconds, she turned to leave. I'll go fetch. You, uh, I'll go fetch you some more hot chocolate. She said, with "Resignation." Blake blinked. Hot chocolate. Thank you, Miss Goodwitch. Then Master Osmond said as the huntress left the room. And please don't forget the marshmallows, the tiny ones. <laughs> the door was closed gently behind Huntress Glenn the Goodwitch. Osmond turned back to look at them. Michelle Long. No. Yang growled out. We're not accepting this mission, and that's that. Daggerhorn, Weiss murmured, staring at the floor. Why does that name sound so familiar? From the moment she heard that name, something tickled at the back of Weiss's mind. Past the current panic and concern and worry bubbling inside of her due to Ruby's quickly deteriorating health, there was also familiarity. She had heard that name before, a long time ago, but for the life of her, Weiss couldn't remember why. The, the, town of Dag the town Daggerhorn, Blake said, drawing Weiss's gaze. Twelve years ago, it was attacked by a pack of bale wolves. Being a farming town, with its people being the farthest thing from fighters, the townsfolk were slaughtered, and the village raised to the ground. Weiss blinked. That was right. Now she remembered. Weiss was but a child when that horrible tragedy happened. Twelve years ago. Wow, we're going back. Five-year-old Weiss knew watched with wide eyes as news anchor, someone who was later replaced by Lisa Lavender in the years to come, described the horrible scene which took place in the town of Daggerhorn. Hundreds of people were dead. Men, women, children, no one was spared. Houses were burned to the ground. Cattle were shredded. Trees were toppled. And the once white snow was stained red. A few minutes ago, little, uh, little Weiss had been watching her favorite cartoon on television. Then the emergency broadcast took over making her pout. At first, the smallest knee was mad that she was missing her cartoons, but then those awful pictures started showing on the screen, and she forgot all about her cartoons. It wouldn't be until the broadcast was halfway through its stream that her parents realized what she was watching. They promptly turned off the television after that, but by then, it was already too late. Little Weiss had already seen. Back in present time, 211 people were killed that day. Weiss said, distractedly recounting the facts from memory. It would have been a lot worse had hundreds and hundreds not intervened when they did, saving the surrounding towns. Yet, even in all that slaughter, one person did survive. It was a young girl. Blue eyes went wide as Weiss turned back towards Ruby. With a blood-stained cloak. A blood-stained cloak, I mean. Suddenly, it was very hard to breathe. Ruby... Weiss felt like a fool. How had she not seen this coming? How did she remain ignorant for so long? All of the signs were there, but she had still been oblivious. The yearly memorial for the tragedy of Daggerhorn was a week ago, which was in line with Ruby collapsing. 
in the scar on Ruby's stomach. Even a child could put two and two together about how that came about. Thinking back to her own scar, the Schneider has felt a sudden urge to touch it. She didn't. Weiss felt sick to her stomach, but that was probably nothing compared to what Ruby was feeling like right now. Yes, Osmond said, his voice lower than before. It was an awful tragedy, one that may very well repeat itself if we don't do something about it. Pardon? Weiss said, stuttering. Just what the hell was that supposed to mean? Three weeks ago, we received reports of Beowulf activity near the ruined town of Daggerhorn, Headmaster explained. It was left in the hands of the local militia to take care of, and for a time, it seemed there was nothing to worry about. Osmond sighed. But, Blake dared to ask. The silver-haired man took off his glasses, pulling out a handkerchief from his pocket at the same time. Three days ago, we got an emergency request for help. Osmond cleaned his glasses. From the information we received, the local militia was almost all wiped out. Yang growled. If they're so dangerous, she said, why not call in more qualified hunters and huntresses? We have, the master replied, shoving his handkerchief back in his pocket. His glasses went back on his face. But it will take another week before the closest one will arrive, and who knows what would have happened by then. Blake tilted her head to the slide, side slightly. Slightly. Isn't Miss Goodwood she, she is. Osmond cut in, but she's unable to help in this matter. Why? Yang demanded. She's currently investigating matters for another mission and cannot be called away right now. <laughs> How convenient for her, the blonde commented. Why is his hands clenched into fists? The dust wielder her gritting her teeth. Beacon Academy is the only organization which can respond in time before the situation gets worse. That is why I called you girls here today. No, Yang said, turning away to hide Ruby's small shaking form for the headmaster. We have a right to refuse this mission. You can't make us do it. That is true, Osmond said, his expression darkening. Something glinted in those brown eyes of his, something making my shiver. If that's the case, I'll just call on Team Juniper to help handle it. Headmaster Osmond's lips twitched upwards slightly. Oh. Weiss's eyes went wide at that minute movement. She suddenly felt very cold. Weiss knew that look. She had seen it many times when the partners of her fam father's company suggested certain business arrangements be taken care of. Such arrangements, whether it be to open a new warehouse or to increase the prices of stocks, usually came via underhanded tactics and less legal methods. See that look here on the very man leading this school. Signal Academy has offered aid in this. No, 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 no. Weiss opened her mouth to speak. We'll do it. Came a small, muffled voice to the left. No. Weiss looked at Ruby in despair. For a split second, a small, a small smile stretched across Headmaster Osmond's lips. Then it was gone in a flash, as if it never happened. Weiss caught it anyhow. Ruby, No. Yang said, panic clearly heard in her voice. She held her at her sister at arm's length. We are not doing this mission. Do you hear me? We're not. Yang, there's nothing for you to prove. Ruby reached up to hold her sister's cheeks. Yang, she said, albeit a little shakily. We're going to do it, sis, Ruby said. Forcing a smile, she swallowed thickly. I'm the leader, remember? We can do this. I can do this. Weiss wanted to scream, to shout, to yell it all out. But most of all, she wanted to run Headmaster Osmond through over and over again with Mern Master. They've been played. Ruby, most of all. Yang was right. They had the right to refuse a mission. Osmond just couldn't have ordered them to do it, so he made Ruby believe that she had to do it. As a means of atoning or getting revenge, it really didn't matter at this point. Once Ruby made up her mind, come hell or high water, it was going to get done, or she'd die trying. Ruby, Yang said, speechless. Blake looked at her. R Blake looked at Ruby, her lips pursed. Conflicting emotions were seen warring with each other in those amber-colored eyes. Weiss felt like someone had punched her in the gut, leaving her too, un leaving too winded and unable to speak. And Yang, God, Yang was holding on to Ruby so frailly as if the youngest girl was going to break if she wasn't careful. 
and that may not have been too far from the truth. For the first time since coming here, Weishni was regretting her decision to attend Bacon Academy. Ruby warily turned to Headmaster Ospin, putting on her strongest face. We'll be at the pickup zone at 12 noon sharp, Headmaster, she said. Make sure they're ready. Why shifted her gaze to the left? Well, this is the present, by the way. Like, the actual present. Why shifted her gaze to the left? Her blue eyes spying the two sisters and sp sitting next to each other. Wise had an arm around her sister's shoulders, Ruby with her hood on, resting her head against the blonde's collarbone. Blake sat next to, sat to Weiss's right, staring blankly out to the window, her book nowhere in sight. It was rather unusual for the bow-wearing girl not to be reading at a time like this. Not that Weiss really blamed her. Since meeting everyone at the pickup point, no one had said a word. An uncomfortable feeling festered inside of Weiss. She hoped it was just indigestion Fuck, from eating a rush to lunch an hour earlier than normal. But the Schneeris knew she was not that lucky. Indigestion didn't feel like this. Like a thick, heavy sense of doom pressing down on upon her shoulders. No indigestion was easy compared to this. Well, no, indigestion was easy compared to this. Turning back to stare out the window again, Weiss could only hope she was totally wrong about this awful feeling. Oh my god. <laughs> It got so fucking serious. Ah, oh, all right, you guys. That's gonna be it for this session. Um, four chapters are down, and we have four more left to go. So the next session will be the final part of this. This is a this is gonna be a two parter. So yeah. Let me know what you guys think of the story so far, and also how I did. Sorry if I seemed a bit um, distracting from the story, but yeah. And thank you once again to Tear of Light for letting me read this. Seriously, it really means a lot that you let me read this. It, it really does mean a lot. Um, it's so great to be reading the story again. This, oh my god. I just, I, even though this is completely abnormal as to what Ozpin would act in the show... It just, the way that Tear of Light interpreted Ospin to be such a fucking mind tricker, it's like, oh my god, it was so crazy. It was just so fucking, oh, like a knife twisting in your gut. And so, yeah, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> so, I will see you guys in the next part, and as always, stay classy. Later.